good afternoon, welcome back. This is going to be my video on the next 10 games I finished this year. So games number 61 to 70. So game number 61 <coughs> was Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, this game was a little bit of a disappointment to me, but I, I did enjoy it. I did, I did uh, finish it and see it through. But um, the biggest takeaway I got from it was it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. I thought this game was going to be quite a scary game, and it, it's not really. It's more of a kind of um, first-person action, open-world kind of thing. Um, and the open-world aspect really kind of threw me off a little bit as well. Even though some of the side stories are really, really good and really well put together, like there was, um, there was a there was a little side mission. You went into this hoarder's house and you had to find the wee kind of uh, ghost that was in there, the spirit that was in there, and that was really good. And then there was another one that was in a suicide building, like it was a kind of like high rise kind of building, and there was different kind of spirits throughout the kind of um, levels as you go up, and that was that was pretty cool as well. Um, but in the game, there's this mysterious fog that kind of that kind of takes over, envelopes um, Tokyo, and your wee guy is on his way to see his sister who's in hospital, and he gets taken over by a spirit, and that spirit's out to kind of like get the main bad guy, um, but in doing so, he helps him get to his sister because his sister is the target of the main bad guy. It's I mean it's it's, it's all right. I did enjoy it. I thought. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a it's a lovely looking game. Um, the photo mode's pretty good in it as well. But like, when the, the the big like I said, the biggest takeaway was it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. And like, I don't even know if you can see them there, but you can see like the kind of uh, the bad guys. Like the, the the character models are so so cool, so um, creepy looking, really eerie. But it just wasn't. It just wasn't a scary game, and I was expecting it to be scary. Um, but I did enjoy it. It was a good playthrough. I really liked the kind of powers. So you've got these kind of like I don't know telekinetic powers, and you've got to kind of like you do all these kind of like hand gestures and things like that to shoot and things, and it's it's pretty good. It's quite yeah, it's quite unique. But I go by Tokyo. And then the next one I played was Little Nightmares. So I got this. We got this for. For Jay, actually, we got this for Jay's Christmas last year, and he's not touched it, so I thought I'll give it a go. And I played it on the Switch, and I had to put it down because it was it was horrible. Like you, you die quite a bit in this game, so you do. Well, I did anyway. And the loading screens from death to load back up to the checkpoint was just they were just so long, and oh, it really did my head in. Um, but then I played it on the the what's called PS4. And I absolutely love this game, it's so, so cool and creepy. Um, you play as this wee guy that's trying to escape, like, a ship. And, like, throughout you can see all these kind of grotesque, grotesque humans. Like, that's how they are, like, they're just weird as this one with, like, big long arms. Like, it's hard to explain, but they're just really, really, really creepy. Um, and then there's these big fat things at the end that kind of crawl after you, big fat bloody humans that... That are just there eating everything and uh, it's really good but like I said on the switch the load times were, were horrendous like it made me stop playing it um, but then I picked it up again recently on the the PS4 digitally and I played through it and then I played the Secrets of the Maw which is the DLC for it and you play it as another wee boy who's trying to escape and the DLC is fantastic as well like it's, it's a really 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 good game I highly recommend this one but um on the DLC, the DLC is worth playing as well, and it actually adds to the story. So the, you play as a wee boy, and then it kind of goes full circle into the, like the main game. And the wee boy and the DLC, his story ends like three quarters of the way through the main story. It's really good, and I can't I can't say any more on it because it's a bit of a spoiler. That, that, that's that's a great game. Um, the next one was. The chant. So I've just watched Eddie's video this morning, and he mentioned this as well. The the thing about this game, I, I really really enjoyed this game, and he really recommends it as well. And as do I. I, th I thought it was a fantastic game. The thing that really took me by surprise with this was the whole kind of was the whole game itself. To be honest, I, I thought it would be a good game, but I didn't think it'd be as good as it was. 
it's a very by the numbers kind of horror kind of kind of game. There's like six people in a circle, and and the number one objective, like Eddie was saying as well, was like you can't you can't break the circle. And of course, what happens is your friend breaks the circle and she runs off, and then all, all hell kind of breaks loose. So you kind of go to different areas, and this is what I really liked. I really liked this about the game is you went to different areas, and the different areas were different. Um, different colours, different emotions almost kind of thing uh, and that, that's where you fought the other members of the cult so in each area was a different kind of story related to the characters and that was a really nice kind of a really nice touch and a really nice way to kind of set up the game and the gameplay and everything and mix it up and everything um, like you go into the mines and you're looking for I can't even remember the names but you're looking for the guy and then you go to a lighthouse where you're looking for this girl who's convinced that she heard her son that was down at the lighthouse kind of area. It's just really good. It's a really good game. It's, it really does harken back to kind of the, the old kind of survival horror kind of games. Um, and the graphics, the graphics are really good. They are, they aren't like mind blowing, like Eddie said in his videos. Well, they're not mind blowing, but but the way that they utilise the kind of like, like it is a wee small island and there's different areas to go to and things like that. But the way they utilise the, um, the colour, the way they utilise the colour and the different kind of realm that you go into for each kind of person's um, story and each kind of person's level, I guess, was really, really good and really well done. So The Chant is a really good game. Highly recommend it. And then the next one is House of Ashes, Dark Pictures. I really, really enjoy the House of the Dark Pictures anthology games. I think they're they're so cool that they're, they're like and they're they're nice kind of different games to play like when you're playing like a lot of different games um, a lot of game games i guess where where you're going after high schools you're going after trophies things like that and um it's nice to play like a like a movie style um linear story based kind of game and this was really good i was really taken aback by this as well um i played the quarry as well this year and i do prefer the quarry to this but this is different and in, in, obviously in its story and it really reminded me of the, what was it, that British movie, British film, The Descent, like if you watch the movie The Descent where they're obviously, they go cave diving I think it is in the movie, um, that doesn't happen in this but it's got that, that kind of like feel, like you're in, you're underground and you're fighting off this um, slumbering enemy that you awaken. It's really good. I really do um, highly recommend this game and the Dark Pictures games in general. I've not played a Dark Pictures game that I didn't like. I played them all except for except for the new one, Devil in Me, the Devil in Me, I think it's called. I've not played that one, but this one's really this one I would recommend as well. My favourite one would probably be Little Hope because I really like the kind of a uh, I really like the aesthetic of Little Hope. I like the kind of town that you're travelling through and things like that. And I know a lot of people don't like Little Hope that much, but Little Hope was probably my favourite one. But anyway, House of Ashes, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. And then the next one I finished was... So when I finished this game, it was hands down game of the year for me. Um, and previously, throughout the year, it's been Final Fantasy XVI, and that's been my game of the year, like, all year until this game came out and it's Spider-Man 2. What a game, what a, what a fantastic game. Uh, my little brother got me this for my birthday and I played through it, uh, I wouldn't say quickly, I, I kind of took my time with it. I didn't do all the side missions but I played through the whole story and I thought it was fantastic. I've seen like a lot of people on like, like Twitter and things like that saying that the story is not a strong point but I thought the story was on point, I thought it was fantastic. Um, I really like the kind of duo kind of story going on with Spider-Man, with Peter Parker and Miles Morales. I think the the performance, the performances are fantastic. I think Peter Parker's performance is brilliant because obviously everyone's seen the kind of trailers and things. You get the black symbiote that goes on to you and things like that, and you become you get the you become a little bit darker. And I, I really like that kind of like switch Peter Parker has. It doesn't become bad, he just becomes a bit of an arsehole. Um, but I, I thought it was bloody fantastic. 
Um, I got maybe halfway through this, maybe three quarters of the way through, and then it was my birthday, and my missus bought me the next game that's coming up, and I was, and I wanted to stop playing this to go on to play that, but I just couldn't. I couldn't put this down until I finished it. That's why I thought it was at that point it was game of the year. So my game of the year changed from Final Fantasy 16 all year until this came out, and then it changed again for the next game. And the next game is, I don't have a physical of it because controversially it doesn't have a physical and nobody wants to buy this game because it doesn't have a physical which is a crying shame and it's Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 is fantastic, honestly, game of the year, game of the generation, it's just, it's just fantastic. It's like, like I've played a lot of Remedy games this year actually, I've played, I've played I think I've played them all, I think I've played, um, Quantum Break, I played Alan Wake again, Remastered, I played um, uh, Control again, like those two games, Alan Wake and Control, I've played two or three times now, and absolutely, every time I play them, I love them, and Quantum Break I've played once, and that was really good as well, but the, th those games all leading up to Alan Wake, you can just see all the, you can see that this is Remedy's Continuate, Magnum Opus, that's the word I was looking for, that's the kind of phrase I was looking for. This is their Magnum Opus, this is everything they've learned from the games before, is all in this Alan Wake 2 and it's phenomenal, it's just so bloody good and I can't I, I can't tell people to, to go and play it and recommend it because nobody wants to drop, and I completely agree with this, nobody wants to drop 50 quid on something that you can't have in your hand, I agree with that 100%, but also on the flip side, you are missing out on the best game of the year. I'm telling you, it's the game of the year. Um, everything about it, the, the, obviously the graphics are fantastic, but outside the graphics, you've got this, the storyline so good, so well made and well put together. Um, the music, the sound design, the, the, the artist, artistic direction of it is fantastic. Like, like the way the kind of stories getting told as you're still playing the game with like little silhouettes kind of like scattered around and you can hear Alex Casey talking or you or you hear Alan Wake talking or or when you're Saga and you go into her mind place you speak to um you speak to all the characters that you interact with and the performances are just phenomenal um I can't I can't rate this game highly enough honestly it's it's just so good it could even be the my favorite game of all time um and that's quite it's quite a stretch because obviously it's a new game and you can't even really say that can you you've got to say Super Mario Brothers 3 or something like that but honestly this game is just fantastic um but anyway I can I don't want to talk anymore about it because it's oh it hurts me that nobody else has played it it really does my wee brother said he's going to buy it and pay the day actually but I do get it, like 60 quid, 50 quid to drop it on a digital game is quite steep. So I hope people can get it when it goes on sale or it goes on to Game Pass or PS Plus or something like that because everyone needs to bloody play it. It's so bloody good. Um, anyway, from the highs of Alan Wake 2 to the lows of Donkey Kong Country 3. Oh my god. I had a hard time with that game. And it's not that it's a bad game, I don't think it's a terrible game, I really don't. But it just it just wasn't it just wasn't for me. Um I got some enjoyment out of it. I did I did enjoy beating it because now it's beaten and now it's out it's out of the way. I don't need to play it again. Um and also this is part this is the, the beauty of this um game club fifty two that we're all kinda of taking part in just now, is that we get to play all these games that we don't that we wouldn't necessarily play. Um, I wouldn't necessarily play a Donkey Kong game unless it was part of like this challenge. And for that, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed um, broadening my horizons and trying new games. But uh, it just wasn't. It's just not a good game. And I think it is just because I think Ross mentioned this as well. I think it's just because I'm kind of spoiled nowadays with all the kind of modern retro games. Um, like all the like the newer kind of retro games are all on point, but even saying that, like even older games, like um, like I mentioned, Dynamite Headed, like uh, they just controlled a lot better. They were a lot more 
uh, snappy, a lot more responsive. The controls in Donkey Kong and the gameplay itself is just so sluggish. That's that, that's what I found anyway. I didn't think the hitboxes were right. I didn't think I didn't think what I was doing or what I wanted to do was going across on screen. I just maybe it's just a me problem. I think it probably is just a me problem because because Donkey Kong Country is a it's a highly regarded game. It's Nintendo, so you, Nintendo don't do wrong when it comes to platformers. Maybe it's just I think it maybe it just be me that had a problem with it. Anyway, Donkey Kong Country 3 is done. It's part of the 52. I enjoyed it for that, but I wouldn't go back to it. Even though the like Eddie and Ross said, don't let that kind of like, um, don't let that sully your impression of Donkey Kong's because Donkey Kong 1, Donkey Kong Country 1 is a fantastic game I've heard, and Donkey Kong Country 2, 2 is just as good, I think. But I'll wait a wee while until I go back to Donkey Kong Country, I think. Uh, next one was The Last Campfire. So that is a it's a little two two D no a little three D adventure game, um, where you play as an ember and you you're going to the afterlife or you're going to what's next. I don't really know if it's the afterlife, but you're you're going to what what comes next kind of thing. And on the way, you've got to kind of find these little you find these little statues and it's little it's other little embers that have become forlorn. And I had to I had to Google what forlorn meant because I didn't know what forlorn meant. And forlorn forlorn means alone, abandoned, and sad. I think that's what it is. And that really kinda of put it into kinda of perspective. It's a really nice little game, it's but it's got really kinda of heavy kind of connotations like um, so these little embers that you meet, they're just little, little statues sitting on logs and things like that. And they can't move on to the afterlife because because of whatever reason that you're stuck in limbo, I guess, and they're frozen in statue form. Um, so you've got to kind of click on them, and then you go into like a little puzzle. And when you do the puzzle, you free them, and they sit around the campfire in each area. I think there's like three or four different areas, three or four different campfires. Um, and yeah, it was just really, it's a really beautiful game, like uh, graphically, it looks really nice. And it's got a really addictive hook with all the little puzzles and trying to get all of the little embers from their forlorn state. Um, I finished the game, I think, with... I missed two of this, the embers, so I really want to go back and get the, the last two. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. It was really kind of... It was a calming game. It was a nice kind of... Nice pace. There was no danger of deaths and, like, um, restarting, retrying and things like that. Like, Donkey Kong Country 3, like that... <sighs> Man, I died so many times in that game. I just wanted a nice game and Campfire. The last Campfire definitely hit that void for me. Um, beautiful little game. I would definitely recommend it, especially because you do get it on the the eShop. You get it on there usually for like two quid or something like that. It's, a de it's definitely worth it's definitely worth a playthrough. Um, next one was what? It's the here. <coughs> Adventure Time. The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom. This game is pretty cool. I watched Ross Butterhaw. He was streaming a bit of this a while ago. And I was like, oh man, that, that looks quite good. I, I, I wouldn't mind playing that. It, it plays like an old style kind of Zelda. Uh, top down, Link to the Past kind of thing. Like, it looked really good. And he said he was going to send me up a copy. And he did. He sent me up a sealed copy of this. Which was really nice of him. And then I was cataloging my games and I was going through like my pickups and things like that and I was putting them onto my phone and it turned out I already had it so I've already got this game but anyway thanks very much Ross I've got it sitting there um, I said I'll send them it back but he said just pass it on so if anybody wants a copy of Adventure Time Secret of the Nameless Kingdom give us a shout and I'll send it over to you but anyway about the game I really did enjoy it <clears throat> I found it quite hard though like, <laughs> and that's quite a silly thing to say because I think it's a kids game a kids kind of a uh, animation animated series um but the thing that i found quite hard about it was not 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 even hard just frustrating was like it doesn't tell you where to go it doesn't tell you what to do it doesn't tell you right now you have to go there but first you have to go and see this person it doesn't tell you any of that you just have to go and explore and adventure i guess um and that that that's quite cool but i didn't really get that until maybe a couple of hours into it 
you've really got to explore everywhere, find everything. Not not find everything, but find everyone that's kind of like hidden away and things like that. Because then eventually you have to go back to them, but there's there's nobody that tells you where to go. Um, but apart from that, it's it's really really good. The graphics are are beautiful. It's a nice two D, like I said, two D Zelda kind of game. Um, the combat's good. It's a really good game. The story you you kind of you kind of wake up next to a campfire, and you've been told. In fact, you don't know why you're there, but you've been told you've got to go to the castle. So you go to the castle, you meet this wee guy. <coughs> What's his name? Pillow Mint or something? I can't remember. The names are so weird in the game. Um, but he tells you you've got to go and rescue the three princesses to start the coronation to see who takes over the Nameless Kingdom um, to rule it. So you've got Slumber Princess, Lullaby Princess and Nightmare Princess. So obviously, when you hear that, you just know Nightmare Princess is going to be a bad little bitch. So, so I, it's, it is really good, and it's like I remember as well. There's a there's a bit in it, and I release a shot of it, and there's a there's a cave. It's just so daft. There's a cave, and there's like all these little teddy bears raving, like a mad rave going on, and these teddy. It's just stupid, but I did really enjoy it. It, it was a little bit tricky. A bit tricky, but aye, it's definitely worth it. And I managed to finish it, so. And you get, once you get to the end, you pick. You get to pick of the three princesses who rules, who rules the Nameless Kingdom. And obviously, it's not the Nameless Kingdom anymore. It becomes the Lullaby Kingdom, or the Slumber Kingdom, or the Nightmare Kingdom. Whichever princess you pick. Um, I don't know if I picked the right one, but I picked who I wanted to pick. But anyway, <coughs> the last game, so game number 70, was Bastion on the on the Switch. And this game is brilliant as well. Like, honestly, it was so good. Everything about like, the music's really, really cool and really weird as well. It's a kind of eclectic kind of mix of music. Like, I got a lot of vibes of country music and then there was some, like, Bollywood, Hindi kind of music. Um, it was really cool. But you, you wake up and you have to make your way to the, the Bastion and then you've got to build the Bastion and you've got to build a weapon shop, an upgrade shop, um, what else, shrine, like all these, you've got to build up the Bastion because there, uh, there was a calamity and you've survived and you meet a couple of other survivors but it's not it's not even the story that's the best thing, obviously it's the, the gameplay is, is on point. And this is where I go back to like Don I'll finish the Donkey Kong Country 3 for the rest of my life now. Like Donkey Kong Country 3. Like that that Bastion's like a newer kind of obviously a newer kind of game. And like everything just works. Everything's on point. The shooting, the 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 kind of movement, everything. Um and that's where I, that's why I was saying about Donkey Kong Country 3, I think we're spoiled these days because everything's just so much better and so much responsive. Um as compared to like older kind of platformers, but anyway, Bastion, Bastion's uh, a really cool game. Graphically, fantastic as well, and it's weird because the worlds that you go to like pop up under from your feet. It's almost like a pop up book kind of effect. It's kind of weird, but it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Music's fantastic, and the really cool um, aspect of it as well is the the wee guy that's in your that's at your bastion, like the wee main, the wee kind of, what's his, what, how can I say it? The owner, the owner of the bastion, like the, the, he narrates everything, and it's really cool, like, honestly, the kind of uh, performance is brilliant by him, and, um, aye, it's just really good. It's hard, it's a hard sell, because I remember, like, ages ago, when it first came out, everyone was raving about it, and, it was like indie and a little bit indie darling, everyone was loving it. And I only ever seen like stills of it, like pictures of it, and I thought it was all I thought, ah, it looks alright. But it's not until you play it, until you actually play it and and the kinetic feel you get when you're shooting and rolling and dodging and things like that. It's really, really good. Definitely, definitely recommend Bastion. And again, on the eShop you'll get that for two or three quid as well. Um Dirty Digital. Loved up with digital, especially when it's that cheap. Anyway, that's my game 61 to 70.
Cheers. Thank you very much for watching. Um, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.